we got a spicy one today. Uh, this is my video responding to the park district who responded to my video. And I want to talk about this a little bit more in depth uh, in this video because it has to do with uh, an opinion about a skate park. And I think it goes against what a lot of people think, but a lot of people in my community uh, are agreeing with me on this one. So I want to kind of break that down a little bit and talk about why some people really like this skate park, some people really hate it, like myself. So let's dive into that. But first off, I posted this TikTok right here. Update for you guys, and it's one you haven't seen yet, but a brand new park. Check it out. Starts off with this small little quarter pipe. There's this box and mani pad, but look at this. This is like not even coping. A square rail, and then a round rail that has two different heights, and then this random fly out ramp. Now let's look at the transition section. There's like a quarter pipe, and then an even bigger one to go out to this fly out box. A really small hip with one of these awkward down rails. The half pipe, which is probably the best part of this. The double rail A-frame with this Rick and Morty spine and here's the whole entire park three out of ten okay so i posted that video being like yep this park basically sucks but showing what it has now if i go through my tiktok comments there's a ton of people that are like hey bro my town doesn't even have like a skate park be thankful you have it or hey bro my local's way worse hey bro my local only has like one rail Bro, be thankful you even have a local. We don't even have a skate park by me. Comments like that is what I got filled up with on TikTok. Now, in all fairness, a lot of them are right, you know? A lot of people, I'm very fortunate that I have a local skate park, let alone just one skate park that's somewhat close to me. Uh, a lot of people in different countries, uh, even matter of fact in some states, uh don't have a skate park their town just decided that it wasn't right for them to have a skate park and it's unfortunate because you don't get to see people get out and they don't really have a sense of community through skating because of that ultimately unless they make another effort themselves however there's also people that are being like this park is very good like what are you talking about and to that i say like yes it has what you know some skate parks uh should have such as you know like a hip a down rail a half pipe you know some people like the fly out box like the rails the little two-step box like sure those are essential some people like it however the discourse comes in at which there's an intersection of people being like i like this skate park and just like skate whatever as long as it's there but there's also like a fine line between what skateboarders like and what people who don't skate like but also like people who can just ride anything across the board and especially now that a fence is down this welcomes in bikes uh and a lot of other things into the park that weren't originally intended for the park uh so that is where another thing comes out so another thing i'm going to talk about too is how this park is metal and how the other park was uh masonite and kind of like the durability of the parks. Now, real quickly before I get into that, uh, John Hill, and I'm gonna get to the message of what this, the park district said to me, but uh, real quickly, John Hill put out this video right here. Called, it's called, Who is Building These Skate Parks? Welcome to Highland Park Skate Park. Let's just do a little tour. There is this pyramid in the back. It's a little steep, but it actually looks kind of decent with the bottom right here. And then uh, to the right, we have another pyramid setup this one actually looks really fun as well i don't really understand now look how thin the metal is on this like notice there's not even like a piece of iron to cover it to easily ride onto it over time especially in the midwest that stuff warps and everything gets all like bumpy and then they just put the one piece of coping along the side which makes a thing a lot harder to stand slide. obstacles like this because resize. the pyramid is great but i don't get the ledge on the side i mean i guess you can just try to figure out cool ways to skate that but over here you have just a normal quarter pipe it looks about like a a five footer which is it and look how messed up this already is too like it just kind of also invites people to just paint on it like that uh it also just tends to lift as you can see it lifting it chips it also rusts out over time time and time again we've seen these old parks rust out and i guess behind all of this you have oh i didn't even see this in the pictures but you have this 
this box is something that arc ramps used to install into their parks and they've recently stopped installing these and i'll show you what they installed in our new one which you probably already saw on that TikTok earlier is like that two-step. Seemingly perfect. And then you have this horrible flat rail. It's like a really tall square rail. I mean, it's not the worst, but this ledge actually looks very, very decent. No exaggeration. My God, this rail actually looks like one of the better flat rails in all of the skate parks in all of the Dallas area. And that's like 50 skate parks. This is the obstacle that I was most excited about showing you, but what? The actual hell is this. <laughs> yeah, so that's just to give you an idea of arc ramps and an outsider perspective that isn't me saying, oh, arc ramps is bad. Because arc ramps, however, does make some really good parks. They've shown plenty of designs in their skate parks. We just happen to get one of their worst designs. Now here, real quickly, another, another quick example of an arc ramps park in Palatine, Illinois. They put in this skate park. They did like a little half a bowl situation. They did kind of like a little pyramid, which this pyramid is far better than the one that we got. And the, the hip system's a little weird. It hits at a weird angle. I don't like it. Other thing too with arc ramps, a lot of their stuff is just like place and go, place and go. And it's like the idea of how flow works is not kind of put together there. And a lot of the stuff ends up getting grouped together real close and it doesn't allow for good flow. It just ends up being a thing where people cluster and get in the way and you can only hit one thing at a time and kind of ruins the purpose of going to a skate park to warm up. So real quickly, let's dive into what the park district said and let's see what my community had to say about the skate park. I'm gonna scratch on the community aspect after I talk about what they said. So uh, this is what they had to say. The park district provided the opportunity for public input and held a public meeting in the Newton Skate Park design last April. Many patrons attended throughout the night, including frequent local skaters. Okay, but even if they attended, they're failing to say, oh, we didn't listen to them. Because I don't think that anybody I know, and by the comments, was like, Yep, this is a great design. Roll with it. The objective of the design was to keep a similar level of experience as the existing park while updating the current skating... Pra what in the world is current skating practices? Ah, you know those skating practices from six years ago? Remember those? You know what I'm talking about, right? Like how they used to skate versus like how they skate now, right? We're on the same page. The end goal being balanced design for all ages abilities different users other than just skateboarders other than just skateboarders dude that's so cringe so they're basically being like we look forward to the new improvements and value the skateboard as a unique asset to the community this is actually a bad asset to the community this is not a unique asset this there's no way this is unique if there were skateboarders that got on their hands and knees and poured concrete ramps and put some element flat bars there then maybe we're talking about unique this is so far away to unique this is like unimaginably not unique they basically used a couple of the things from the other skate park and placed them in different spots to put their own version of it but however this system is going to rust with the amount of snow we get in the midwest uh the amount of people are going to trash it real quickly they just picked basically they picked a quote unquote cheaper design and then rolled with it instead of looking at other skate park building companies who could have done it for the same amount of money or even less and had a better park and you know my argument here is if they were to rip everything out and just put like a element flat bar and a nice box, that'd be so much better than this current design. It didn't feel like anything that the average person in my community would enjoy. Now, let's see what everyone had to say, right? You know, gotta, gotta see what the folks had to say. This was an enormous mistake. The original park was 10 out of 10, and it meant a lot to the people, and you've trashed it. Whoever led this revamp should be aware. They already got ratioed in the first comment. <laughs> I wrote, can you guys please take this down? I'll pay you. Destroyed a perfect skate park. Holy shit, well, first grade class, he let design this. Rick and Morty Spine, such a tragedy. GE, I used to live next to the little park, and it looked better than the rebuilt one. Really strange looking. This is a disgrace. This is a heartbreaking shame. Oof, that's bad. Someone said, from what I understand, the community was very much cherry-picked, 
and skewed towards what the leadership wanted to install versus uh, following desired trends in modern skate park design and building practices with consideration of longevity, durability, and skateability. We're at least a decade past metal services falling out of favor as well. I'll still check it out while seeing this opportunity lost, uh, including accessibility for other wheeled sports and skills levels. Um, what on earth are current skating practices? There are skate parks built 20 or more years ago that continue to serve as travel destinations for thousands of skaters across the world. So what mysterious secrets does yours hold that makes it more in sync with the present? <laughs> Oh, they got owned. You had two meetings. One of the designers didn't even know what a hip was in the meeting, dude. And then look at this. Someone, I'm not going to read this comment, but someone's reaching all the way up from Arizona that was like basically saying, this skate park is nowhere near as nice or user-friendly as the original. And, you know, you can sit there and read that note yourself too because it's a very true note. But, you know, my bias aside, let's talk about how a skate park brings in a community. Now, if you have a skate park in your town, you're very familiar with showing up to your local skate park time after time, and your homies are there, you guys hang out, you have a good time, and even if you're just going for the first time, when you start going, you start seeing some of the same faces there, and that becomes your community. That is everyone that you want to hang out, that, that becomes everyone that you want to hang out with at a skate park over time. Uh, and so Glen Ellen, for, you know, close to... 13, 14 years has been exactly that for me and several others. And what keeps us coming is the style of the skate park and how we all bond over being like, oh, we can all skate a ledge. Like, we all love, like, the, the flow of the park. Uh, we love how there's, like, a little ledge to sit on. We can watch each other skate and we can talk and, like, get along with one another. Or things like that. Like, they don't even, have, there's not even, like, a bench in here to, like, sit down. Like, sure, there's probably one in the woods over there, but, like, it's not in the skate park. We're not. There's nowhere to really sit and chat with the homies unless you're at the top of the ramp, which ends up taking up space for everyone. That aside, that is what happens. You know, we all kind of have a sense of community, and because of how a skate park's made. Now, when that skate park is destroyed, and let's say a better one comes in, which I've seen before in Illinois, then that community then moves over to the better skate park or gets used to it, and we all kind of bond over that. It sort of happened with Wheaton, but in a different way where like our old community kind of was like, eh, we're not really about it, but it kind of built up like a new community. And sure, you can make that argument with a skate park, but mainly this is not going to attract the same community that's used to frequently going. So now we've lost basically what was our sense of like our homies. Now we're all like, oh, where are you going to go skate? Because we don't even want to go to Wheaton anymore. We don't really want to go to Glen Ellen. And we're not going to really go much further to go, you know, just chill and have a random good day in the summer or something like that. It was a nice little go-to for all of us. It was our nice local skate park. Uh, so it is sad to see that everyone's kind of like, eh, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I don't think I'm me and a lot of my other friends are going to be seeing each other as much anymore. Uh, it's going to kind of separate us all in a way. I mean, sure, we'll make our own plans and do our own things, but this was one of those things where it's not like you have to make a plan. This is one of those things where it's like, you know, I got nothing going on Wednesday at 2. Let me just go to the skate park. Oh, hey, there's like five people I know here. Uh, and that was the kind of the, the joy of it. And, you know, even if you were skating it by yourself, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, you, you might hear this and think, well, this is someone who is not used to change or this is someone who, you know, doesn't want anything to adjust or whatever. You know what? Fine. You can make that argument. But the other park was twice as good. It had everything we all needed. No one complained about it ever. The only people that complained were the park district saying there was holes in the ramps. And because of the holes, they needed to build a whole new park. And it's like, if you're going to do that, at least like, be willing to hear out people more. I mean, I remember when they posted the design on the website, there were people shitting on them then too, being like, no, don't do this. And they still did it. So I, you know, I, I can go on and keep going on, but I'm going to stop the video here. That's all I wanted to talk about. Uh, cause this is a public embarrassment for Glen Ellen. So if Glen Ellen people are watching this. I hope you guys end up destroying the crap out of this park and just putting like one element flat bar in the middle of that concrete and maybe a good box that would be like four times better than this. So even literally put a, hey, 
put a rock in the middle of the park. One stone. It'll be four times better than this, all right? That's about it. Uh, if you're new here and you had sat through this video and enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.